Hello, great people. Welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to have you again. An Amber State decides as an Amber State gubernatorial election has come and gone. And based on the reports that we've gotten from INEC, it seems that uh, that election was inconclusive. But then, um, from all indication, there are proofs everywhere that uh, Soludo, the former governor of CBN, who is going to also be a new governor, this time around, not of a corporation, but of a state, uh, had already won, I think, 18 local government, left with three. So, from all indication, he is the winner, though not yet declared. But the latest is that INEC have reacted to the turnout of the elections, and they have put the blame on the, a particular group which you are going to hear in a jiffy. In the same vein, um, APC have decided to play the same card that they played in uh, um, Imo states. And uh, you're going to hear some of the reasons that they have listed and uh, the step that they are about to take. And it seems as if uh, what happened in Imo state may likely happen in a number of states, but that's just my assumption. It's not that I'm, you know, I'm very correct, but just an assumption based on what has been happening or something. But we're going to give you full details of all of that in a jiffy. But before we do that, if you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly hit the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notification anytime we publish our videos. Now, according to the news, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has blamed the indigenous people of Biafra IPOP for the poor turnout of voters during the inconclusive Anambra State governorship election. INEC said the seat at the home ordered by IPOP sent fears into residents, hence the low turnout during the polls. Sam Egu, who is an INEC supervising resident electoral commissioner in a number of states, disclosed this while featuring on channels television. According to him, he said there is a whole state of fear that had been created by the politics of agitation for a separate state in this part of the country. IPOP has been able to enforce the Cedarnome order over time, so the fear of IPOP had become the beginning of wisdom. We have had a problem uh, with extremely low voter turnout. The voter turnout, I think, if you are scientific in terms of what we are seeing in many local government, you are actually declaring with less than 25% voter turnout, and this is not really good for our democracy. Prior to the number of state governorship election, there was fear over the citadel order by IPOP. Amid the fear, IPOP had said the citadel home order was to prevail on the federal government to release its leader, Mazin Namdi Kanu. However, the group cancelled the order a few hours to the commencement of the election. IPOP had urged residents of the state to come out and cast their vote without fear. Meanwhile, in another development, the All Progressive Congress, APC, has accused the candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Abga Chukuma Soludo, and the number state governor, Willie Obianu, of rigging the inconclusive governorship election in the state. Basil a GDK, the chairman of APC in the state, made the remarks while rejecting the results so far declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. In a statement he issued on Sunday night, a GDK vowed to contest the result at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. <laughs> if INEC insists on declaring Soludo as the winner of the election, a GDK vowed never to accept the election outcome because the people of the state wants an APC governor. He called for the cancellation of the election and a new date fix for a fresh conduct of the pools. According to AGDK, he said, we want the whole world to hear our voice that we will never accept the outcome of the Anambra gubernatorial election. The candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Abga, and the sitting governor, Willie Obianu, manipulated the whole electoral system and we will still st and we will stand to resist it. We virtually won in all the local government, but <laughs> William Viano and Charles Soludo, through instrumentality, corrupt minded INIC officers subverted the whole progress in favor of Abgar. 
but if INEC goes ahead to announce the result, we will definitely challenge the election process at the court of law up to the Supreme Court. Nobody can intimidate us. Quite interesting. You know, the man did not say we are going to challenge it at the federal high court. He did not say we are going to the appeal court. He said we will challenge it even to the point of where the Supreme Court <laughs> is well. You know, that, that was one of the fears that uh, Nigerians had. We are not saying that, you know, Supreme Court will do anything positive, but based on what uh, they have said, therefore means they do not really align with it. But first of all, let's look at what really happened during this Anambra State election. A lot happened. I may not be able to give you, you know, step by step, but uh, the one that triggered the attention of most Nigeria was what uh, an INEC official said about being forced, you know, to sign um, electoral documents that personally he wouldn't want to sign. According to him, he said, man, that he, he went through a lot until he was locked into a, a toilet and dealt with, and he had to because of you know, life is just one. You can't just play with the one life you have. The young man has to do what? A pen signature on the document. But how true is this? Who is there to prove or to show evidence in that regard that uh, he was being forced to do all the signing? And who are the people who were behind it? Which party was behind it? Most fingers have been pointed at Abgab in that they have been able to sweep through, you know, um, more than up to 18, you know, local governments. So people are pointing fingers. But then uh, we need to see reasonable proofs, you know. And the issue of recommending the cancellation of the election for me, um, it, it's difficult. It will be very difficult. Difficult in the sense that, number one, so much money. The budget allocation for that election was quite huge. I may not be able to tell you exactly, but it was quite huge. And manpower use, all of them must be paid, you know. And the security that was uh, redeployed down to number State, they were much. For you to do that again the second time, it, and I don't think that any reasonable government will want to, you know, go through that. Nigeria, we are in a very progressive state. Let me not say progressive. We are in a very wonderful state of uh, our democracy where people see election as a do or die affair and that's why we are always very emphatic about this issue of restructuring because uh, most people are running into those offices and killing and doing all manner of things because they know that no matter what even if i don't have the uh, think tanks around me but as much as i exist as a governor i'm so sure that i'll be getting on a monthly basis some very good money from the federation account and that's uh, the issue of restructuring should not be overemphasized again because we have flogged this issue so much and it's important, it's very glaring. I think it's high time the government used this to control the kind of people people vote into office and also to see if it will not help out during the period of election. Because if, for example, you are the sole proprietor, you are, you are the sole administrator of your state, when you come in, you are the one to decide how much revenue will be coming in, you are the one to decide the level of development that will take place, you are the one to decide virtually everything, you will now realize that a lot of people will be scared to go into the office because if they go in there and uh, nothing is on ground for the payment of salaries and the likes, they, they, the people will find it funny with them. But unfortunately, uh, we are still enjoying so much money from Federation Organ. That's why every day we wake up to see our election as a do or die affair. For me, a number of state election, though it was not with so much violence, we had one or two violence here and there, but then um, the extent of uh, the progress thus far, the progress report as it has to do with Nigeria, uh, that's uh, with election in Nigeria, the, the report is not too good. I can tell you that I'm hopeful that uh, in the nearest future, if Nigeria still exists as one nation, um, we will see a situation whereby people go there, vote, and they come back, and they stand to see that their decision is on the electoral report, because that's what really matters. It's not just to, because I saw some older women who decided not to collect money, vote buying, they were not part of it. They, they had to say, man, I want to vote the right person. But unfortunately, what is on ground, will it truly represent their actions and their decision? That's what I like to leave you. Go to our